I read books. I have books. I read books. I have books. I'm here to talk about books. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Morgan, your fave internet bestie, and today I'm here to talk about what I always love talking about, books. I have read a lot this year, y'all, which is kind of surprising for me, I'm not even gonna lie, it's really surprising for me because honestly, last year my reading goal I think was 50 books, and I did not make it, I did not make it, okay, I think I made it to about 38 or 37 somewhere around there I hit the biggest reading slump ever of my entire life in like the whole month of December and I just could not read for jack shit like nothing nothing this year I got a little bit more greedy I couldn't make 50 but I was like I'm fed up okay I'm fed up with my BS I need to get through this TBR back here so I made my reading go 75 books y'all and right now guess what your girl is at 48 books 48 48. I am literally eight books ahead of my reading schedule. I am so, so, so happy. I went through a huge reading spurt at the beginning of this year. I'm not even gonna lie. And I was reading like multiple books, like two books a day for at least like the whole month of January to like February. I was reading a lot. I was getting my money's worth from that Kindle Unlimited subscription at the beginning of this year, okay? So I do have lots of books to get through with you guys today. I'm not gonna continue rambling on in this intro. I'm just gonna dive into the meat of why you're here. The reason you're here is for the books, of course. So I'm gonna dive into that, you know? I'm gonna start off with the physical books that I have like literally with me and then we're gonna move on to the Kindle books that I did and then from there I'm gonna answer all of the media reading wrap-up questions that there are on the internet on the World Wide Web. First thing I read this year was Ricochet by Krista and Becca Ritchie. I gave this book actually a three out of five stars. Um, honestly I loved the first book Addicted. I literally ate that shit up for breakfast lunch and dinner okay one day read i did this one i felt like dragged i know it's supposed to be like a in-between book but it dragged for me and i was getting really 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 upset with lily's character in this book it just was not the vibes okay i was not reading the vibes or the vibes weren't appealing to me i don't know this was kind of like a little letdown but yeah i gave this book a three out of five stars and after that i got into like a sort of little thriller horror vibe and i picked up the final girl support group by grady hendrix now i rated this one also a three out of five stars honestly i was in a big three out of five mood um this wasn't excellent but it wasn't trash either i love slashers i love horror movies and horror films, any type of thing, slashers especially. So I thought I would be obsessed with this because I love the whole concept of a good final girl. But mm, I don't know, it just kind of fell short. The ending or the beginning was like really picking up and then the end fell short for me yeah next up on the books that i have with me right now um was verity now i rated verity a four out of five stars which is a big shocker for me i am not a big coho fan if you know you know i have another coho book on this list back here and let me tell y'all y'all probably gonna hate me for the review that i'm gonna give it but this one I actually gave a 4 out of 5 stars. I also listened to the audiobook of this, which is the first audiobook I've ever listened to. It had me gasping, okay? It had me gasping for air. The book, this book, literally. It did. It did. I was like, oh. 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 So she want to play. That's what I was thinking while I was reading this. And the audiobook just made it 10 times better. I was like, okay, Colleen, go off. I'm going to give you your credit when it comes to this one. So this one I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read this year was Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren. Okay, now I love Christina Lauren. I love their books. Love in Other Words is literally one of my favorite all-time reads. It's literally one of my biggest comfort reads. But this was a big change from love and other words okay this was anything but comfort this was straight chaos okay i gave this book a three out of five stars it was good 
but it wasn't spectacular it didn't have a little oomph that i was expecting from a christina lauren book so i gave it a three out of five Ugh. next up was this literal bible of a romance book i read final offer by lauren asher i am a huge 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 lauren asher fan okay dreamland billionaires is literally like one of my favorite series ever to date so i could not wait for cal's book and now that i have cal's book i'm obsessed with it okay i gave this book a four out of five stars cal was refreshing okay he was like a breath of fresh air in this broody angry businessman trope thing that they always have going on he was anything but broody this is a second chance romance friends to lovers childhood friends whatever to lovers um also it has single parent trope in it as well it is so so heartfelt it is so good Parts of it I felt like were a little bit too long, which is probably why I didn't give it a five stars. But the rest of the book, the dialogue, literally Alana, Cal, everybody in this book, chef's kiss, okay? I will brag about this series from the heavens for the rest of my life. Dreamland Billionaires, they own me literally next up i read hooked by emily mcintyre now this is book one in a series i think the series is called never after the never after series i read this um because honestly it was all over the internet and i was seeing these books everywhere and i actually really love the covers of all of these books so i was seeing this everywhere they've hooked a four out of five stars hooked was actually one of my favorites in this entire series that i've read so far it was so good it's like a peter pan not really like retelling but i don't know how to explain it but it's inspired loosely by like disney fairy tales this one is about peter pan and of course captain hook the villains are the main like love interests in these books so i really 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 enjoyed that this was so good okay this was so good and it's not even that long either i think i did this in like a day and i went right back to the store and bought the second book because i was like oh no immediately immediately yes immediately yes like i said immediately yes right after i read hooked i went and i read scarred which is book two in the never after series now this one is about the lion king and it's about scar obviously from the lion king but they're humans so all of these books are like um without their magical aspects i should say so they're literally just regular contemporary romances but they're inspired by disney fairy tales and Disney characters okay I think I gave this one a three out of five stars I wasn't really the biggest fan of this one and I wanted to love this one I love Lion King I love lions I'm a Leo duh <laughs> maybe I think it was a little bit lost in translation for me from making them like lions to literal like human beings I don't know flowing right on into the next book of the never after series I went and I read wretched now this is I think a wizard of oz like inspired story I actually gave this book four stars I actually gave this book four stars this one about again hold on Evelina Westerly has always been the bad guy. He has brains and brown and botanist behind her family's drug empire. She's her father's ruthless secret weapon. Oh. I remember what this one is about now. Okay, yes. I definitely gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This one was so good. I loved Nicholas. I love Evelina. Okay. I loved them. I loved them. I said evil queen. Yes, please. <laughs> this one stars i actually gave this a one star on my goodreads actually i'm not lying i gave this a one star on goodreads no matter how much i tried i could not get through this book i dnf'd it every time every time and i'm counting it as i read it because i got really 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 far in it and then i will put it down and then i will read some more and then i will put it down this book was these close these close to putting me in a reading slump i could not do it i said this is neither here nor there colleen who because i did not want to hear more about atlas <laughs> or lily i'm sorry 
Next up, I read Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This one is also a thick bitch, okay? Final offer and Things We Never Got Over are thick hoes. It's the double mint twins for thick romances that I have read this year. Gave this one a three out of five stars. Obviously, you can tell why I gave it a three out of five stars because I can't remember half of what goes on in the book. I really wanted to love this, but I just didn't. It was so long, I felt like it dragged. Like, if a book is gonna be long, keep me interested okay and I just felt like this one didn't, didn't do that like at least a hundred pages could have been cut out of this and it would have been better yeah <laughs> y'all listen 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 up Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This is the best book of 2023, okay? I ate this up. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yarrow's Infinity Stars. Infinity amount of stars. I thought I could never love a fantasy book as much as I loved Akamov, okay? I am a huge A Court of Thorns and Roses fan, all right? And I just knew Nothing could ever give me that rush that Akamov and Akawar did for me. I was like, I'm never gonna feel that feeling again. I'm never gonna have that, 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 that vibe ever in my life again. And then fourth wing, Rebecca Yaros said, bitch, hold my tea. I devoured this. I devoured this. I sobbed, I laughed, I giggled, I squealed. I swooned all of the above. I went through the seven or the five, how many stages of grief it is. I don't know. I went through all those stages, okay, in this book. And I devoured it and I don't regret it one bit. Infinitely amount of stars. The dragons, the enemies to lovers, the fighting scenes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This ate. This ate down and left no room for anyone else in my heart for a while, okay? For a while. Infinite, infinite, infinite stars. Read this. I picked up Throne of Glass after that one. And honestly, I hoped that it was gonna give. I was on a fantasy high after I had finished Fourth Wing and I decided to pick this up. I have every single book in the Throne of Glass series. This is the last series that I have to read of S.J. Moss before I'll have completed everything now up until her release that comes out in January of 24. So I'm like definitely trying to get through this series this year, but I believe I gave Throne of Glass a three stars. Mm, yes, I gave Throne of Glass a three out of five stars. Now this, unlike Sarah's other series, is not written in dual first person POV. This is written in third person. So you get to know everybody's thoughts and feelings and like a view from everything overall, which was a little bit more difficult for me. I did a lot of research on this series after I was done like reading this book and I was honestly high key confused as to where this is gonna go. So I need to continue reading this, but anyways, it's neither here nor there. I really liked the introduction to this character, um, Selena Sardarthian. I loved the introduction to this character, but um, yeah, the third person kind of threw me off but that's a personal thing. Next up, one of my most recent reads as well was Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Now, I wanted to love this book, okay? I gave it a three out of five stars, I believe, and I gave it a three out of five stars because of the trope in this. Miscommunication is so huge in this, and it literally ticked me off the entire book. The entire book. However, the main male character in this, Jacob Maddox, saved this book. He's heaven sent all of the above, okay? He was everything, everything, everything and more. I'm obsessed with him. And so, really, he saved this book. He saved this book from getting a two. He saved it from getting a two. I honestly think I gave this like a three, seven, nine. So, it was really close to a four. But that was highly because of Jacob like highly he was everything and more everything 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 i love him yes and more now to my most recent physical read which is another book by one of my favorite authors lauren asher and it is 
Collided! Collided is book two in the Dirty Air series. Now, I read book one last year, sometime last year, and that was Throttled. I read that sometime last year. I have no idea when, but I also gave this book a three. Of course, all year I've been in living in the threes, living in the threes. It's very hard for me to give a book something under than a three, okay? Collided, I gave a three because, I don't know, I just didn't feel for their situation or feel for the characters and the situation i felt like their romance was a little bit predictable to me now liam dirty talk king okay dirty talk king he can talk the panties off of your grandma all right i said oh my good lord when i was reading this it's so many lines i have underlined in this is outrageous okay and i also listened to this in the audiobook the audiobook reader of this i don't know his name but he was fantastic fantastic okay he was great he was great he had the accents down everything i think that's what really sold me on liam's character but their romance was very predictable just not make up a tea you know Dirty Air is a F1 series, and honestly, after I read Throttled, I became obsessed with F1, and I went down this F1 pipeline, and I don't know. I love F1 now. I love the men in F1 now. <laughs> I don't know. I've met a lot of girls who also said the same thing, that they read, like, this book or whatever, and then they got obsessed with F1. Laura Nasher, you do it. You know what the girlies want and you give it to them. So that wraps up all the books that I've read physically this year. And now I'm going to get into my Kindle books. I'm going to have my phone out because I'm on my Goodreads. But I've already had my phone out so I should just shut up. Anyways, basically I'm going to go back to the beginning and catch you up to now. To what I've been reading. Okay, on my Kindle. First up, we have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Now I actually read this um, physically. I actually own this physically. However, I'm lending it to a friend right now. But that's by Grady Hendrix. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Now Grady Hendrix, I love him because he writes about my home state now i'm from south carolina i'm from the south okay a little southern bell and this book takes place in charleston south carolina and i ate it up next up i read haunted hearts and that was by ariana kane now i read this one i have no idea what this was about but i gave it a three out of five stars i don't remember what it what it was about i think it was dealing with like a like scarred hero type of thing dealing with ptsd he was in like the military those type of vibes but i gave it a three out of five stars next up we have the demon's bride this was book one of the crescent covens by lee miller i gave this one a four out of five stars again i don't really remember the plot of this <laughs> but four out of five stars oh let me look at my notes and my highlights for it. Mmm. I remember why I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. <laughs> this little demon guy, the king of hell, whatever he is in this book, he was freaky. Okay, he was freaky. I was in like a smut, like a high smut binge around this time also. Okay, so he was popping. He was popping. Quote here, I have a knot. You won't take it tonight, but someday you will. We'll work you up to it. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, we have The Hunt. And I gave this one also a 4 out of 5 stars. One of my friends on Instagram through the Bookster community that I met, she does a thing called like F Me Fridays or Fuck Me Fridays or whatever. And basically, it's like very freaky book wrecks that she does. And I love it. And I get some of like the spiciest books I've ever read that are on Kindle from her. It's a Snow White kind of like reimagining and it's reverse harem and it's dark and it's a lot going on. Please read the trigger warnings for this. I am not responsible for the feelings that you may have when you read this book, but I gave it a four out of five stars great it's a fun time no plot included okay the savage phase mate now i gave this one a three out of five stars this one i thought was stupid a little bit um it had also the kind of like that little primal play or like that chase chasing play 
uh, type of thing trope going on in it. But it was kind of stupid. Like, she threw a penny in a well and then, like, a fairy popped out and, like, dragged her back to, like, this fairy world. It was a lot going on. Three out of five stars, okay? Next up, we have Pestilence um, from the Four Horsemen. Now, I gave Pestilence a four out of five stars. I actually loved these Four Horsemen books. I also read War. I guess I'll mention War right here as well. And I gave War... Also a 4 out of 5 stars. I love these books. They're by an author named Laura the Laura Thalassa. Yeah, I loved both book 1 and book 2 of the Four Horsemen series. I don't know, something about the end of the world and you know, Four Horsemen. Mm. Next up I read Broken Whispers and Painted Scars. Both are books 1 and 2 from the Perfectly Imperfect series. And I gave Broken Whispers a 5 stars and I gave Painted Scars a 4 stars. They're like mafia books. And I love good Mafia Daddy. I love good Mafia Daddy. Don't quote me. I just do. Mafia Daddies do it for me. So Mafia Romances also do it for me. Next up, I read books two and three of Salicious Players Club, which were Eyes on Me and Give Me More by Sarah Kate. Now, I gave both of these a three out of five stars. I wanted to love both of these books so bad. I loved Praise in this series, but books two and three kind of felt like a little bit short for me. Then next up on my candle, I read something called Camp Deviant. This was the stupidest book ever. I gave it a two stars. It was actually ridiculous where you like sign up to go to this camp, like this kink camp camp and like you get all your dreams fulfilled the guys were just stupid the, the the writing was stupid I shouldn't talk about people's writing like this but it just didn't do it for me okay it didn't do it for me two stars next up I read heartless heathens also two stars next up on my kindle I read a book that destroyed me and it was called pen pal this was suggested by also another one of my bookstagram friends this is by JT Kessinger yeah Amazing! Amazing! Amazing. I'm not lying to you when I say this book, it gives what needed to be gave. It crushes you in the most beautiful of ways. The plot twist is so unexpected. I loved it. I ate it up. 10 out of 10. 5 stars. Next thing I read on my Kindle, um, uh, one of them was a 2 out of 5 and the other one was a 3 out of 5. One was The Dark Elves Secret Twins by Celeste King and the other one was Demonic Prince by Karen Kinsey. I was on a monster binge for a while. Like I really was wanting to read about monsters and monster romances. So I was on like a little monster high during these. Both of these were ridiculous. Next up, I read A Soul to Heal, which was book two of Dust Walker Brides. I have read book one, and this is by Opal Rain. That's the author of these. And I actually gave this a five stars. Okay, I gave this a five stars. Even though, okay, hear me out, hear me out. Monster Romances, I could not see myself doing the Devil's Tango with a big furry monster with a skull face. Okay, that's not the point. The monster romances are written great, okay? It's something about the monster romances and, and the enlarged peepees. I don't know. I don't know. It's neither here nor there. It's neither here nor there. If you read monster romances, you know it. If you're a monster romance girly, you get it. The people that get it, get it. Ugh. Now, next up, I'm about to lose my mind when I tell y'all about this series here, the Windy City series. This was Mile High and The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford. Oh my gosh. I ate these books up back to back. I was not getting no sleep. 48 hours, no sleep, because I just had to get through these books, okay? Evan Zanders. Stevie Shay, Ryan Shay, and Indy. These books were legit golds. I lied to you not. Legit golds, okay? I loved every single piece of these books, top to bottom. All of the characters, all of the tropes, all of the feelings. These books get infinite stars. Infinite stars. They don't even get a five. They get infinite stars. They're sports romances. The first one is hockey. The second one is basketball. But let me tell you, the men, Liz Tom Ford knows how to write some men. She know how to write some men because I was in love from the very first scene to the last scene with these men. I just was obsessed. The women, the romance, the banter, 
everything about this series is amazing mile high right move i can't decide which one is better i just i have no thoughts i have no thoughts when it comes to these books infinite stars chef kiss then i read the serpent and the wings of night by carissa broadbent now i gave this one a three out of five stars maybe it was a little bit overhyped i think i watched too many videos like hyping it before i actually read it which normally that's why i only read things that are very hyped up way after they're like initially done i don't want to let the hype influence what i think of the book and i think i let the hype influence this one a little bit too much because i didn't really vibe with it as much as i wanted to and that was all of my books that i've read on my kindle this year yeah i've read a lot we're gonna get into the question part of the mid-year book tag the best book that you've read so far in 2023 so i would say this is kind of hard for me to pick because i've read a lot of good books but definitely fourth wing and mile high and right move all three of those are tied for first place for all different reasons like they're all very different books especially fourth wing in comparison to the sports romances but those were some of the best i mean the best books i have read this entire year the next question here is new release you haven't read yet but you want to book two in the crown of niaxia series i want to read that the carissa broadbent and the book is called The Ashes and the Star. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So Rebecca Yaros, Iron Flame, which is book two um, to Fourth Wing. That comes out October 31st. Also Cross by Emily McIntyre. That is book four. Nope, book five in her Never After series. And I think that one is like Hunchback of Notre Dame. So that one comes out in August of this year. And then also Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score. That is book three. I have no idea what the name of this series is. However, book three, um, Things We Hide From The Light, is also coming out in September. And I'm excited about that one as well. Biggest disappointments in books that I've read this year would definitely be Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score, Ricochet by Krista and Becca Ritchie, and definitely Collided by Lauren Asher. I love Lauren Asher. I've told you guys this before. So this one was kind of like a fall short for me, especially after Dreamland Billionaires. And I also really enjoyed Throttled as well. So I just, I don't know, this one kind of fell short for me. Ricochet, like I said, I could have done without this. It gave novella vibes. And things we never got over, my friends and like so many people I know hyped this book up and it just dragged for me. It dragged. It did. My biggest surprises in books this year would definitely be Fourth Wing. I want to talk about this book so much. And also Icebreaker. I think I might have actually read Icebreaker at the end of last year, like December of last year. It was my first like sports romance that I've ever read and it introduced me into the thing that I call Hockey Men. So I'm really obsessed with Hockey Men now. Favorite new author, debut or new to you? My favorite new authors, I have two of them, would definitely be Liz Tom Ford, the author of the Windy City series that is Mile High and the Right Move and also Rebecca Yarrow's The queen the author of fourth wing so it's fictional crushes i have a few well it says fictional crush but i have crushes all right we definitely have zayden ryerson which is the male lead of fourth wing we have evan zanders and ryan shay which are the main leads in mile high and the right move and then also jacob maddox from yours truly all of these men gave what needed to be given okay they were reassuring sweet sexy filthy and like the best kinds of ways yeah they were everything a girl wants and more newest favorite character now i have only one for this character and that was stevie shay she was the female male lead in mile high gosh i loved her i just related to her character so much in that book a book that made you cry i have a few i have fourth wing pen pal war 
which is book two in the Four Horsemen series, and also yours truly. A book that made you happy. The Windy City series books made me very, very happy. Like I said, I just love the men characters in those books. They were funny, and the main characters weren't toxic. You know what I mean? I hate sometimes in romances where the main male character literally has no redeeming qualities, but somehow he's always forgiven and like taken back by the female lead. The most beautiful book you have bought this year or received. So I've been holding this book. I don't know if y'all can see. I've been holding this book up multiple times. Look at the pages. <laughs> Look at that. Also, I would say books that I bought this year that are also really pretty is Final Offer and also Once Upon a Broken Heart. And the last question on the mid-year book tag list would be what book or books do you need to read by the end of the year? Now, this is a tricky, loaded question, a very loaded question because I have so many, so many books. I need to read by the end of the year, but a few of them would be the remainder of the Addicted Calloway series, remainder of Throne of Glass, the Bridgerton series, the Off Campus series, Dirty Air series, the Once Upon a Broken Heart, and Ballad of Never After. Like, I have to get through so many series this year, so I'm going to be on a series binge, and I'm probably going to have to break that up somewhere in between there with like little standalones. But those are books that I feel like I really need to get through this year. Honestly, I want to get through as much as my physical TBR as I possibly can. I have so many on my physical TBR. So I want to get through those a lot. So we'll be getting through those together, friends. Okay? <laughs> Anyways, that's the end of this video. I'm so, so, so happy you decided to listen to me verbal vomit about books for about 30-ish minutes at this point. I hope you come back and see me again next time, friends. That's all for now. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!